Nowadays, it is very important to understand PoE or power over Ethernet in your switching environment because most of the devices such as IP phones, IP or surveillance cameras, wireless access point, and many more devices demand power from your switch. So you need to understand what kind of switches you need to buy to meet this demand. If you don't have access to a real switch, Cisco Packet Tracer is the best place to start with. So in this lab, I have three different kind of switches. So 2960, 3560, and 3650. And I can tell just looking at the model number, this is not a PoE switch because you see the model number printed outside of the switch. By looking at the model number, if you see something T at the end, that is a non-POE switch. You also can verify that using the command line. So let me go to my command line. I issue a command show power and put a question mark. And if you get unrecognized command, then this is a non-POE switch. So let me move on to the next switch. So this is a, a POE switch. So let's do a show power and in line. You have 24 port. Each port can provide maximum of 15.4. Because there are different classification of POE. If it can provide 15.4 max from each port, that is called a POE switch. And if it can provide 30 watts, that is called POE plus switch. So you can tell this is a, a POE switch. Let me move on to my next switch. That is a 3650. This is going to be a modular switch. I have to show you here from my previous switch. Here, if you see here, this is a fixed power switch. But this is a modular switch. Let me go to the physical view. And I have to put the power separately. I already put the power, but if I start the switch now, it is going to tell you, you must power on the switch. Because you need to insert these power supply units separately. So I have inserted my power supply. So let me go into the command line. So now it is booting up. I would say no. Enable show power in line and if you see here this is a 24 port each port provide me maximum of 30 watts so this is called poe plus switch and if you look at here the available power is 780 watts and nothing used because i have no device powered up on these ports and remaining is 780 watts. Since I have inserted two power supply, I have a lot of power available. Let me uh, take a calculator, calculator, and then I go to my calculator and I put 30 watts maximum into 24 ports. So I might need 720 watts. And if you see here, I have 780 watts. So I can use all these ports for a PoE device. So let's get a phone into this switch and see how the power is used. So I go to end device and I go and take an IP phone and let me connect that. Okay, it is connected to gig 101. Let me fast forward the connection. By default, power is provided to all the ports. You don't have to issue a command to provide the power, but you can issue a command to deny the power. So let me go now and uh, see the power usage. Now I issue the same command. And if you see here, it is showing me it is an IP phone. Since it is a Cisco IP phone, it recognized that phone here. And because if you use the command show CDP neighbors, it will recognize the IP phone as a neighbor because 
it is a Cisco device and CDP enabled on those ports by default. And it categorized that as a class three device. It has allocated 10 watts to the phone. But actually, this device is not going to use 10 watts that's been allocated to this port. If you want to see how much it is using from the allocated power, there's a command called show power inline police, P-O-L. Right now, I don't have that command available in Cisco Packet Tracer, but in the real switch, you have that command available. So power inline P-O-L-I-C police, and it's going to say uh, unrecognized command. I have an output from a real switch. You see here, this is a two switch stack. You can see I have power available on both of them. So this is a show power inline command that we have in the packet tracer. Let's take a similar device. So this is a IP phone. So here, if you see here, same kind of power is 13 watts and it's a class three device. Maximum is 30 watts allowed on the port. And let's go to the power inline police. So that is called this one. And let's go to that port is 139. Let me go to this one, 139. And if you see here, it is using operational power is three watts. Allocated power is 13 watts. I show you from the power in line command and operational power is three watts. And if you see here, it will calculate 117. That is right now it's been used. But what happened is the switch will allocate the power that is the 13 watts, but it's not going to use all of them, but it's going to reserve that power no matter what. So when it deduct that power, it's going to deduct not three watts, it's going to deduct 13 watts because uh, these devices go in a different operation mode, like uh, uh, cameras and your uh, access point uh, all of a sudden start to draw power, especially when they boot, they, there's a power surge. So it will be using the maximum power uh, during some times. So it's going to allocate that power and it's going to maintain that allocation, but the actual power is being used will not be equal to the cutoff power most of the time. So that is how POE works. So you need to understand what is the operational power and what is the cutoff power. Hope you have learned something from this video. If so, please uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification. All right, thanks. Bye.